I'm going to come in and attach my thread here behind the eye of the hook. Take a few wraps and snip off the excess. And when you set this up to tie this pattern, you want to try to ensure that this top flatter part of the clink hammer hook is approximately level with the ground. Uh, we're also going to use this hook point here as an index point. So everything we do for the abdomen is going to occur here or behind that hook point, and then the front of the fly is going to be in front of it. So we're going to bring in a piece of, I'm tying this one in tan, so we're going to use brown, uh, UTC wire and medium. And I'm going to wrap back, tell them about it, that index point there above the hook point. Catch it with the wrap, and then I'm just going to walk this down the opposite side of the hook shank. Kind of got to watch the back side of your bobbin. Is the way that hook eye sticks out there, you kind of got to wiggle and work your way around it. So I'm going to take this fairly far down, stop about eighth of an inch uh, above that bend that goes out toward the hook point. And I'm going to return that thread to where I started. I've got a little piece of two millimeter foam here. This is cut to about an eighth of an inch wide. I'm just going to catch it by the tip here. We're going to go over this a couple times. You're going to want to compress it to where it's nice and squished down in the middle. It's probably going to end up going back up over the top of it. Back down to where it was. You just want to ensure that you wrap over enough of it so that you cover your lowest thread wraps there. And you go ahead and return your thread up. I'm going to take an extra wrap or two just so I can set that off to the side over there. So you're going to wrap this forward now. Applying just a decent amount of pressure. And you want about half of your strip coming around to overlap the previous strip. Gives it a really nice, cool, segmented look here. So keep that pressure on. And then once I'm about at that point directly above the hook point, unwrap that. Bring my thread over the top. Squish that down. Always give it a pinch and a cinch few wraps, snip off the excess, stick the nose of the bobbin in there and catch that foam so it doesn't run away on you. So we're going to bring around that wire and I want to lay this right in the middle of, the, of each of these segments. This is just kind of going to help protect it, hold it down, accents the segmentation a little bit. I'm going to bring this around in the last wrap. I'm going to pull it up and as I tie it off, I'm going to tie it off parallel to the hook shank. Probably five or six good wraps. And the reason why is when I helicopter it and it breaks off and it runs parallel to the shank. It's not going to stick up or down and cause me trouble or catch my thread. I'm also going to look at the bottom side of this real quick. I just want to make sure I have this covered up for the sake of aesthetics. Before I do anything else, I'm going to go up to the eye and I'm going to go back. Just make sure I've got that hook shank relatively covered with thread. So right there, at that point where we finished, before I bring in the top piece, put a little bit of zap -a gap on here. Anywhere where foam touches foam or foam touches the shank, I always use um, a little bit of zap -a gap if I'm not going to over rib it. This part I over ribbed, so I'm not going not too worried about it. So we come on this top piece of foam. This is three millimeter foam. And we're just going to cut two little notches out of it. So the back end kind of looks like this. It's cut at about five millimeters uh, width this way. And I just want this to just barely extend past the top of our body here. And this is the perfect example of, of where you want to cinch and pinch. So instead of just pulling on the thread, I'm going to give this foam a pinch. And I'm going to cinch down at the same time. And I'm going to give it probably five or six good wraps. So I'm going to bring in some elk hair and this clump, I guess, to give you a general idea, is about an eighth of an inch wide. I don't typically use a hair stacker. I usually just create a little space in my fingers and just hand stack it or you just tap, tap, tap against your hand. And if you hold it loosely enough, those tips will even out. We want this elk hair just to kind of extend just barely to or a little bit past that foam tag. So I'm just going to measure that before I actually stick it in there. I'm going to cut it first before I tie it in. So I'm going to take it, gauge that, and snip it off. 
and I'm going to bring it in and set it in there. It just makes it a lot easier to finish off. Once it's in there, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to mess with it very much. Give it a half a dozen good wraps here. And then for the sake of durability, I'm going to bring in a little bit of zap gap. And I'm going to touch it right to where I tied that thread in. Just going to help to hold it in place. I'm bringing the rubber legs here too. I've pre-knotted these. So I'm using tan barred legs on this one. And I'm going to tie them in right on the side, on each side. And I want that joint, this joint in there, to extend just a little bit past my foam tag. So I'm going to hold that in there and catch it with a couple wraps. I'm going to bring in the legs for the other side. And repeat the exact same process. That sideways, gauge it about the same. To wiggle that thread through there a little bit. So once I have a couple wraps on those, I know the front of my legs are going to be gauged and you know approximately out in here. So I'm going to snip them roughly. May trim them up a little bit more. And then for my sanity and the ease of tying, I'm going to bring in a piece of lead wire. And I'm just going to pull them all back here. Take that lead wire. I'm going to sneak it around the hook. Give it a wrap or two, and then they're going to be out of my way until I'm actually done and I need them pulled forward. So when you look at what's left of our hook here, I'm going to split this difference. I'm going to take my thread about halfway there. Let it hang, <clears throat> and then as before, I'm going to take just a little bit of zappa gap, touch the shank with it. We're going to repeat our cinch and pinch process here. So give it a good pinch, pinch, half dozen wraps maybe. We're going to come in with our second clump of elk. Once again, I've kind of finger tapped this and buffed it out. I want the tips of this to match up about with the tips of my back wing. So I'm going to gauge that, see what I need there, pass it off to my hand, snip off the excess, and then bring it in to tie it into place. Catch it on top there. Looks about right. A few wraps. A little bit of zapper gap right on top. For the sake of durability. And then very simply, we're going to take this piece of foam and I'm going to fold it back at the front of this to about match up with the eye of the hook. We're going to come over the top of it, give it a good cinch and pinch. Probably two or three times here. Squish it down. Get at least a half a dozen wraps in there. One thing, and this is a little OCD on my part, but when I look at this, I want my thread wraps to fairly well line up. So I'm just going to back those off. I'm going to track over the same track. Maybe it's a little bit nitpicky, but I always try to take into account what the fish are going to see. So once I have that secured, I'm going to come in with my scissors. I'm going to snip this off nice and short, right down in there. So we're going to bring in some hairline parapost material. And this is in pink. And very simply, I'm going to fold this right over the top of the thread. I slide it down. Cinch it down in there. Take a wrap or two. And I leave this long, and I'll explain why here in a second. It will get trimmed when the fly is done. Um, but I'm going to leave it that length for a little bit. I'm going to bring in a grizzly hackle. And make sure I strip the bottom a little bit of that coil off. I'm going to make sure that that bottom side of the hackle is facing down that dull side. And then we're just going to catch it right on top here. Throw in a couple wraps. So now we're going to take this and I'm going to go six up and six down. And by that I mean wraps. So I leave this long so I can hold on to it. 
So now I'm going to take a hackle and I'm just going to pass it back and forth between my hands. So there's three, I'm going to go four, six, and then I'm going to start to work my way back down. Wiggle it in there. Come around and I'm just going to pull these back. Pinch that with my hand. Once I have them pulled back, I'm going to come right over the top of it with my thread. Make sure I catch it with at least two good wraps. I reach in there with my scissors and snip that off. And at this point, I can take that pair of post material and I can trim it off about a quarter of an inch above that. So we're ready for our legs now. So I'm going to take this lead wire off. Unwind that. And all I'm looking to do here is just to catch these front legs right against the body. So I'm going to bring this thread up, catch it there, stick the nose of my bobbin all the way in there. So I work just right underneath the hackle and then repeat the same process on the other side. Pull those back, wiggle it through there. And I'm just going to hold them back. I'm going to get three or four good wraps around those legs and make sure everything's locked down. Stick the nose of my bobbin right up in here. I'm going to go right underneath the eye of the hook. Go around about half a dozen times. And because of this blunt head here, I'm not going to actually whip finish it. I'm going to throw in two quick half hitches and then I'll just hit it with some zappy gap. So when I look at the length of these legs here, I'm going to trim these back legs to where they're about even with the bottom of the abdomen. I'm going to trim these front legs to where they all about line up lengthwise with the joint on the back leg. And then I'm going to take a little bit of zappy gap and I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to hit the thread on the bottom all the way across just to give it a little extra sheen and protection. And then anytime you tie any sort of parachute pattern, you should always go in a little bit of drop right at the top of the post so that it doesn't unravel. And I also like to put a quick little drop right at the base of the post. Okay. 